Well, today is Romanian National Day, and I'm interviewing or trying to interview two Romanian people. Unfortunately for me, they both speak perfect English. The lady is Elena. 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 But actually, I'm not Romanian. Well, sorry, <laughs> for today's purposes, you are a Romanian, but you're not actually, that's an interesting point, you're not actually Romanian. Okay, I pretend I'm Romanian. You'll pretend you're, because the day is a Romanian day. <laughs> and you are? I'm Kalin Huma, and um, I am extremely happy to be in Jersey uh, to help my colleague Andrea, the Honorary Consul of Romania here in Jersey, uh, to actually offer as much information about Romania on this amazing occasion. Um, Romanian National Day is important to, to all of us uh, because it gives us a sense of appartenance. It gives us a sense of reason. It gives us um, a pedestal upon which we can build further our relations with uh, the communities uh, in, in which we try to integrate. Today's occasion uh, is going to be marked by uh, a, a wonderful um, evening uh, at the, uh, the City Hall, uh, where um, we have the privilege of having uh, Elena, our resident pianist, with us, giving us a recital composed of some uh, folk music by Bartok, some Romanian folk uh, music by Bartok, and uh, some other music by uh, Rachmaninov and Bach, just to uh, woo the audience uh, in the beauty of this uh, dialogue between, um, uh, between cultures, uh, between uh, lyrical uh, universes, and our message today is going to be one of uh, unity. It's going to be one where Romania becomes a connecting point between uh, cultures around the world. We know in Jersey you have a large Romanian community, uh, I think 10% of the people living here are Romanians. You have a large Polish community, a large Portuguese community. And I, I believe Jersey is a, a melting pot of communities. And I think when we talk about Jersey, we have to talk about the community spirit. And each of us, and I cannot talk about the Portuguese or the Polish or other people, but we can talk about Romania. Each of us brings their contribution, our contribution to what uh, the community is. And what we want to do today is to celebrate through art and culture this communion, because I believe this is a universal language. This is the best soft diplomacy tool mm -hmm. that one people has, have to actually promote their culture, to promote connecting and offer me a space where I can integrate with dignity. Because if I, as a citizen, am trying to integrate in your community, and you ask me where I am from, and I tell you I'm from Romania. And then they say, oh, Romania, what do you associate Romania with? <laughs> you can associate Romania with Hadji, with uh, Nadia Komanec, with Ceausescu perhaps. You can associate Romania with, um, I don't know, poverty or uh, orphanages. But what is Romania? What is a country? Now you've corrected me, Elena, that you're actually Italian. Do you agree with that? Is that sound like... Do you, how do you view Romania? Because well, you're not strictly actually, Romanian. <laughs> actually, the first thing that uh, comes to my mind when I think of Romanian is Dinu Lipati, <laughs> which is, well, who is an amazing pianist. Because right. yeah. I noticed, I mean, I, I've been doing a little bit of research and think, you know, find out who, what earth is Bartok and all the rest of it. Dinu Lipati, uh, correct my pronunciation, please. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, Mircea Eliade. Mircea Eliade. Mircea Eliade. Right. Because I'm amazed, just looking at it, how many classical women pianists there have been in Romania of a very high standard. I'm amazed. Why? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps they have a very um, deep uh, interest in classical music. But you, as, a, the, as again the internet tells me, you were playing from the age of seven, mm -hmm. and all these people seem to play at the age of seven, and they all achieve these extraordinary high standards. 
I mean, I can't, look, I've got my left hand is on my right arm and my right hand is on my left arm. I can play anything. But you, you, and you go to university, you study everything at university, you speak how many languages? Oh, uh, six. Six languages? Um, I'm studying my sixth. I mean, it helps if you're Italian origin, you live in a different country, but you tour the world, and presumably you can speak to people when you get there because you speak so many languages. It's, you're just a natural ambassador, aren't you? Through music? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. No? <laughs> I only think about um, playing music and uh, trying to bring people on another dimension when I, uh, when I play music. And, and this clever, this clever this man sitting music. next to you, he actually writes music as well. As if he hasn't got enough to do. Do you write music? Does it? Do you? Um, I made a very small attempt uh, right. when I was twelve. I'm, I I had composed I composed a set of variations on uh, a Polish uh, theme um, on uh, the Polish song Wiosna by Chopin. Uh, but then I realized that uh, I was helpless with that. Mm -hmm. and my writing was very. Uh, static mechanic and mm. uh, being in contact with uh, great composers the whole day I felt inferior and so I thought perhaps it's better if I just play their music. And You're going to play on a piano this evening which you've never played on before. I'm no. told it has been tuned. I'm told it is in good order. Yes. Does that worry you what the piano might be like? No. No? Not at all. If you go into the local pub in Romania, do you play the piano? Yeah, no problem. You do? Yes. Oh, extraordinary. No problem. As long as, well, I can't even say as long as uh, all the keys are present, because uh, <laughs> I also played on a piano, right. uh, which only had 18 keys. Right. <laughs> yes, I had to imagine the sounds. Because they had a scheme here where they were leaving pianos out in the street in the summer for people just to play, and it was quite fascinating actually. Yeah, I how mean, many I mean people? That as well, we have that in Italy. Do and how many people can sit down and play the piano, and somebody will come along and sit beside them, and they play together? It's quite well, fascinating. Sometimes, sometimes they do. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, actually, more often than I thought. Right. Yes. One of the problems of being a pianist is you can't take your instrument with you, can you? You can't put it on the plane. Uh, so every place you go has a different piano. But yes. Are they really not so different? Is one piano much like another piano? Um, I think the most important thing is to uh, try to um, try to bring out the piano's personality really? each time. And because each piano has a different, um, a different kind of personality, right. different kind of sound, and you simply have to adapt to um, its personality each time, which can be tricky. I should think it'd be impossible, but uh, when, I, when I phoned the hotel here, the background music whilst you're waiting is Dave Brubeck, but of course did Take five. Do you know what that is? Do you want that? Yes, I also played it. Right? You played yeah. deal. Yes, I played it, but. I have, my approach is too classical, right. I've been told, by, by jazz piano. You don't swing? Uh, not enough. I'm, uh, it's too, uh, how can I say? It was too classical Russian in, in my right. approach. Because that's one of the aspects about <laughs> classical music which fascinates me. It's very strict. And there are people out there who are absolute purists. You've got to hit the right note. If you hit the wrong note, they know. They know you've hit the wrong note. So if you, if you listen to, there's so much, everywhere you go, it's music being played. Mostly pop music, whatever. Does that not distort your view? Do, do you not get a, in your head different sounds? And they, you want to play them when you're playing some classical music. You want to play different sounds. Well, we're such an influence, isn't it? You, have, you see people burst into song, they're singing a song, mm -hmm. and they try to copy the person who sings it. So, mm -hmm. white men being like black men, singing like black men. And mm -hmm. black men, usually black women, have got a distinctive sound in their heads. Now, if you try to sing like that, but you can't do that with classical music, can you? You have to play what's written. You yeah. can interpret a bit, but you can't start putting a bluesy feel into it, can you? <laughs> no, unless it's your own arrangement. Right. You can make it. 
Can you? Can't. What would happen if you if you were on a platform and you had a serious audience and they wanted to hear you play Bartok or whatever, and you start to improvise a little? That would be absolutely forbidden, would it? Who cares? Really? <laughs> <laughs> you are playing. <laughs> you can improvise. Then you can play Bartok as it should be played, and then you can improvise again. Or maybe you can. Why not connect it one piece with another one by improvising? Right. I wish we could do that. Unfortunately, I can't. You speak Chinese. Do you speak? I'm learning Chinese. You're learning Chinese. Are you learning Chinese music? Um, no. Is it so different? Is Chinese? It is. Music, it is, is it? Because it, it sounds very distinctive, but obviously, all no a note is a note. And however you make it, whether you make it with a percussion, or whether you make it on a piano, or whether you blow on a trumpet, it's a note, isn't it? So there's a range. Yeah, but um, the um, piano is not a Chinese instrument. It's no. typically Western. That's right. So um, traditional classical music is not played on, on piano. They have their own instruments and they play on, on them. Only lately, with the influence of uh, of the West, they tried to uh, they right. started to compose. Because you notice a lot of Chinese pupils from a very young age are playing piano to a very very yes, high standard. You see high these high little high. children; they're that tall, and they're playing wonderful piano. Yes. Or to me, it sounds wonderful. Yes. Is it mechanical or is it? Um, actually, they they can be very talented, yeah. and they are also the thing is they are very very disciplined. Right. Very disciplined. Yes, and of course they, they sound amazing because they practice a lot. They practice. Since they are very young, they are very focused. And Do they have a special ear? Uh, I don't know, uh -huh. uh, but what they have is um, they work very hard Do they? and they are very disciplined and that's very important if you want to, to play an instrument. Actually, it's important if you want to reach any goal in life, but with, especially with music, you need to be... When did you decide that this is for you? Every piano? When did, when, what age were you when you said, this is for me, I'm going to play the piano? Seven. That was it, you started then, that's when you started, then that's when you decided, my life is going to be piano? Um, I can't say I was conscious of that decision, right. but whenever I... Uh, when I was seven, whenever I was asked, uh, what do you want to do when you grow up? I would answer, uh, I want to be a musician. Behind you, you two, and I don't know whether we can see them very well, but we've got a little range of paintings. Now, part of the National Day in Jersey today is a little exhibition of paintings which you brought over, and they are of Romania. Just talk us through, what sort of paintings are they? They, are, they belong to Maestro Karkelan, Ion Karkelan. He is originally from the Republic of Moldova. Right. Moldova, as we know, was part of Romania, but in 1812, uh, after the, uh, the war with the Turks, the right. Turks, because we were under the influence of the Turks, they have seized that to the Russians, and then we uh, got it in 1918. It came back to Romania, and that's hence we celebrate the Romanian National Day, where all the the three historical provinces of Romania, Transylvania, Tsara Romanesque in the south, and Moldova have got together with the Republic of Moldova. And that's what the National Day is that's all about. That's what the National Day is about. But Karkelan is um, very well known around the world for his uh, beautiful paintings depicting Romania, uh, rural Romania. And you see the colours, you see, you almost smell the perfume and the scent of mm. autumn or springtime. And uh, we have some paintings um, with the Dan Danube Delta, some others in various Romanian cities like Transylvania or Brasov. We have a painting behind me with Yash, my hometown, uh, the former capital of Romania. And, mm -hmm. uh, so um, we are trying to, it was difficult to bring them some, some other works, but I hope that this would be just the beginning, because mm -hmm. what we are hoping to do is to organize uh, a permanent yearly festival based on culture, not only Romanian culture, but celebrating all the cultures present mm -hmm. on this island. 
And this is uh, what we want is to light the sparkle today with music, with paintings right. and actually induce this need into people to, to breathe more culture and to, uh, to need us to be back and to actually play the, the music of senses to the people and make certain There was a, an exhibition just took place in, the, yeah. it was in various places, the local heritage group were organizing it. And there was a Romanian woman artist, fashion, I think she's a fashion artist, and there was um, some extraordinary works in there. It was in the church, so you had all the, 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 the stained glass windows and the light coming through different colours. It was amazing, and her work was extraordinarily different colours. I mean, obviously, there is scope for all sorts of things to happen, but we've got the cursed Covid, haven't we? Which is not helping anybody at all. So, is this much of a problem for you? Is, you can still organise on online, we can organise things online, but it's not the same, is it? You want to see it, you want to hear the pianist play. Exactly. Uh, I think the world is going to be learning how to live with it. And as soon as we will create a system that is universally accepted amongst countries, as soon as we would um, put aside the differences of sovereignties, uh, I think we would be able to go by and uh, further our you know, intentions with live events, because I think they are fundamental. Uh, you are absolutely right. Um, on online, you can have a glimpse of it. Right. You can only, it's like a preamble right. of what you would want to see. But going into a concert, feeling the vibrations of an orchestra through your body, I think this is the most important experience. And I think our role is to educate the senses. These pictures behind you, the paintings, they're obviously depicting a Romania that was, maybe it still is, I don't know. I don't know what goes on outside of Brezhov, that's all I've seen Brezhov. But there's sort of a nostalgia for a, a past. Is that, is that a strong feeling in Romania? Are people Romanians really grabbing this in Italy? It's the same in Italy, there's some beautiful, I mean wonderful, look at the history in this in Italy, you don't, wherever you go in Italy. Look at the art in Italy, I mean just, just it's, a, it's a wash isn't it with it? Are people realising the importance of that do you think? Not enough. No. If you organise a concert in Italy, do you get a full house? Do people come out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid you have uh, you've hit a nail in his head with this question. You didn't know, but this question is very important to, <laughs> to our penis. Yes. <laughs> Are you going to give me an answer or is it too, too tentative? I think laughter is the best answer. <laughs> is it really? I mean, you, you have to laugh at, at life. Right. Well, sometimes um, people, what we call society, isn't. Um, let's say, um, hasn't reached um, the level of collective awareness which mm. would enable it to understand the importance of these. Isn't that strange? Because music especially, every day, all day, on the radio, we hear music. It may not be your sort of music, but we hear music. And you'd think that would have a huge impact on people, wouldn't you? Their lives would be so changed because it's they everywhere. Are. You think so? Yes, they are. Music can change life. And music can change the life of each one of us. But the problem is that... Um, each one of us is changed, but when we put people together, somehow these um, changes are not so visible. Well, of course, any, any, art, any art at all can be used for the wrong purposes, of course, we also, know that. Also, that, that problem, <laughs> that, especially by leaders who Indeed. understand the power of art, who understand the power Indeed. of culture, it can be used for the wrong purposes, yes. It can be used as a form of, as, an, as a weapon. Yes, I don't, this is my little knowledge of Romania. I don't think I ever know about Romania invading anybody. There was never a Romanian empire that I'm aware of. 
not like the British Empire, which is having a few critics at the moment, the old British Empire. Now, obviously, you have to try not to get involved in these discussions because you want people to come together and work together. Well, Romania, as a smaller country, was always dependent on schemes of collective security. If you remember the Little Antanta, in the First World War and the Second World War between uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, Poland and Romania. They were trying to get together to defend uh, against the Germans. So Romania is in an importer of security, is not exporting security. The way Romania was placed geographically, at the, the very edge of interests of big empires, with the Black Sea corridor, with Ukraine, with what's happening with Belarus, uh, with the Russian expansion, with the Russian retrieving in early 90s from their dominating that part of the world, is uh, always going to be, in a way, in the middle of bigger interests. So how do you respond to that? And I think Romania does great to be part of NATO, to be part of the European Union. I think for a country like Romania, European Union was uh, very important because you need to be protected by a system uh, rather than do not be protected by, by a system, by being by yourself. And well, which is what the problem that Jersey is discovering now, they're on their own to a large extent. So you're looking for friends, aren't you? So, exactly. So sometimes with friends, um, what I have discovered, there were failed schemes of integration. If you take the Hampshire, for instance, if you go in cities like Southampton or Portsmouth, you would see a lot of communities that are segregating after so many years. You would, mm -hmm. hear, you would see a Poland street, a Pakistani street, an Indian street. You will never see a Romanian street. Do you no. know why Romanians integrate? And this is possibly something that we need to praise and we need to ask ourselves what is the secret? And the secret is art and culture. Not because as Romanians we are better artists, but because uh, there is a fiber in each of us, litten, uh, it was litten by the fact that in communist times you couldn't do anything. The mm -hmm. only thing available for you to do was literature, was music, was immersing yourself into an atmosphere where you had to escape the regime. So all of this reflects upon the way we want to, to be part of a different world. And hence, everything that you see, you cannot fight the world with all the instruments, but we have instruments, as Elena said, at our disposal. And music is one of them and specifically cult music. Because there is a debate amongst academia whether or not to call it classical music mm. or Western music. And today is a, is a kind of a uh, debate saying that perhaps it should be called Western music. Well, you're writing music. Now, now in your head, yeah. are you writing classical Western music or are you writing, what are you writing? Well, uh, uh, well I feel in the presence of a true musician, right. I have to be very careful I, what I, I say. <laughs> yes, but so, uh, uh, <laughs> she is a properly trained comment. musician. I am an odd element within the, the music uh, industry. The reason being that I am a political scientist. I did politics and I'm involved deeply into um, bridging together the economical and social mm -hmm. interests of Britain and Romania. But music comes uh, as a form of expression and therefore for me music didn't, didn't have the same echoes. I didn't do music because I had to do to please the professor of certain class or some of my colleagues, but I had to do music because this is what I felt. It was a calling that I had to answer. And I was lucky enough to understand that there was a calling because some of us do not hear what our call is in life. And I was lucky enough to hear it and to try to pursue it. That's why I will always be somehow like an 
asteroid uh, right. rather than a planet right. within the music uh, it, in itself. So, um, but that's why I believe that art and music... We're going to have to start. But this yeah, evening's yeah, yeah. presentation is National Day for Romania. It's primarily for Romanians, not because there other people are excluded, but because there is a limitation due to COVID, the number of people who can attend. So it is an invitation celebration. It is, and uh, our main message is not about Romania, but it is about the rest of us with Romania together, because that's the symbol of National Day, is uniting three historical regions. Right. So why not we extend this? And a bit of Italy thrown in. Uh, well, exactly. As you mentioned, Romania was never an empire. Perhaps it could become one. <laughs> 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 but through art and music and Well, culture. Italians <laughs> usually are quite diplomatic. I think so. <laughs> they are kings of diplomacy. They're very stylish. I know that. <laughs> the art is, I mean, they're so artistic, or historically they're so artistic. You must tell me what they're like now, I don't know. We're going to stop. Anything else you want to tell me? Anything else? And bon mot for the... That's my bit of French, you see, because that's... The... Well, I can tell you a secret. She tried Marmite for the oh, first time no. today. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, you joined the Marmite Club? Oh, my God. It's no, I'm not. <laughs> it's horrible, isn't it? No, no, no. It's, it's all yours. <laughs> it's uh, for um, elitists. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, thank you.